Hi there, and welcome to another success story. Today, I've got the contoured carnivore. Caught my eye on Instagram with some amazing success stories, but her name's Devon. So hi, Devon. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Good. That's good. It's really nice to have you on. Uh, very excited about this one because I do love your Instagram. So I think that's one of the things, if you listen to this podcast and you haven't followed Devon, you really should because it is great. Anyway, um, I will start with the same question. Every single guest has this question. So Devon, how did you become carnivore? Well, thank you so much for having me on. I've actually been following you for my entire carnivore journey um, because of course I found Bella found you. So thank you for reaching out first and foremost, because I was elated to get a message from you. Um, but I started out with my health journey about five years ago. I had my first son. I was pretty young. Um, and I had gained a ton of weight and I had Hashimoto's from the time I was 14. And for reference, I'm uh, 30 now. Um, so, you know, about 15, 16 years, um, I was 24 when I had my oldest son and I had gained a lot of weight and I started getting maxed out on my levothyroxin with my Hashimoto's. Um, and so I was very frustrated. I was feeling, um, kind of crappy. And at this point I was about 220 pounds. And for reference, I'm five, four. So that's, that's a significant amount of weight, um, to weigh for someone, my stature, um, and so I was really frustrated and I was like, I've got to do something. Um, and I was chronically sick. I was always, you know, getting cold sinus infections. And so I was talking to my best friend who is a doctor and he said, oh, you know, I'm doing a rotation right now. And, um, the doctor I'm working with has been talking about this ketogenic diet. And I was like, huh? And so he ran me through keto and he's like, I'm doing it right now, trying to lose weight. And so after convincing me, I was like, you know what? I'll do it for 30 days. I'll do it for 30 days and see where it goes. And I hated it for two weeks, but I was, I'm going to stick this out. And then I did it for 30 days and I had lost about 15 pounds in 30 days. And I thought, you know, there's really something to this. And so, uh, I start, I kept doing it, kept losing weight. Um, then I started working out because it's really caring about my fitness, you know, my overall health, not just losing weight. And I went in for my annual checkup with my Hashimoto's and he did um, the blood test and he goes, your levels are really good. And I said, well, I would love to get off of my levothyroxine. That was always the goal. And he said, okay, stop taking it, give it, you know, give it a little bit and then come back in. And so I went back in and my thyroid at this point, I had lost 60 pounds and my thyroid levels were wonderful. And he said, you know, I don't usually see people come completely off just by changing diet. And he was really impressed. And I thought, wow, you know, like this, there's really something to this. So I had lost 60 pounds, come off my thyroid medicine. I was super happy. And so at this point I was keto for almost a year and I just kind of maintained it. And then I got pregnant, had another baby and gained not as much weight as my first pregnancy. Um, didn't stay entirely keto, was keto for like the first four or five months of my pregnancy, but then COVID hit and it was just the whole, we all know what happened. Um, and then after I had my second son, I started back on levothyroxine. My thyroid was not as, um, it was not doing as well as it had been before I got pregnant. I had gained weight and not gotten it off at this point either. And then I started getting migraines during my second pregnancy. I had never had migraines a day in my life. I was actually hospitalized because my migraines were so intense. And then once I had my son, I continued to get them. So I'm having migraines. I'm back on levothyroxine and I gained weight that I wasn't losing. And um, I started getting chronic kidney infections. So in the 12 months after I had my son, I had about 11 kidney bladder infections and it was chronic pain. Um, so I went to a specialist. He diagnosed me with something called interstitial cystitis, kidney stones, and an enlarged kidney. Um, and for people who don't know what interstitial cystitis is, for my ladies specifically, if you have ever had like a urinary tract infection, essentially it is the feeling of a urinary tract infection without having an infection. So the lining of the bladder becomes super inflamed 
and essentially you are feeling all that horrible, you know, the burning sensation, the irritation, cramping. Um, and usually it is affected by the diet, something dietary that you're doing, uh, you're consuming. So I knew something in, once I had been diagnosed with that, I knew something that I was eating, even in a ketogenic diet was affecting this. And I was still getting, you know, mild kidney stones and I had an enlarged kidney. So I was lucky to have a really wonderful urologist. He gave me a list of 10 things and said, you have to cut out every single one of these things. And then we're going to go from there to kind of tame down the kidney stones, the interstitial cystitis, and to see if it helped with my enlarged kidney. So the diet was the first thing that he um, had recommended. And of course, a lot of these things I wasn't eating because I was ketogenic, um, but a lot of them I was. So fruits, um, really acidic vegetables like peppers and tomatoes, which of course I was consuming a lot of because I was keto. And those were, those were, you know, those a plus foods that you can eat on a keto diet. Um, coffee, um, strawberries were a big no go. Um, anything artificial sweetener, he said, stop it immediately. And so I did, I cut all of them out. I cut coffee out. I cut soda, like diet sodas out. I cut a lot of the vegetables and fruits out too. And so here I am eating this really healthy lifestyle and I'm still having the flare-ups. I'm still getting IC flare-ups. And I thought, this is not working. Like I I am keto by definition. I should be like superb right now. And it had worked for me before my second pregnancy and it wasn't working anymore. So I had already known about carnivore. I was already aware of that. Just being in a keto, the keto space for so long, um, hearing Michaela Peterson talk, Dr. Barry talk about it. And so I thought, well, if I'm eliminating all these foods already, and I'm basically only eating meats, why not just do the whole thing? Why not just go carnivore, you know, cold Turkey. And so I did, I just did it. I cut it out, everything else out completely. Um, and at the end of February, beginning of March of last year, and I am off all medications. Again, I'm not on Levo. I don't have an enlarged kidney. I am not on any of my interstitial cystitis pain medication. I've lost 37 pounds. Um, I have no more, I have not had a migraine I can't even tell you the last time I had a migraine. So that is just the long story about how I've kind of evolved on my health journey and gotten into this carnivore space. Because that's a really interesting list. The acidic veg, like tomatoes, coffee, strawberries, artificial sweeteners, fruits, really good. Did this kidney specialist say to lay off the protein? No, never. Not once did he ever say. Um, he the only thing he ever told me was if you are eating sausage, like like an Italian sausage, that seasoning in that could really affect you. Um, and spicy foods, but that was the only thing. He was like, Hey, watch what you know, what kind of processed meats you're eating. But that was about it. So, how did you know that your kidney had healed? Because I wasn't in pain anymore. <laughs> and I and I think that and and I I I think a lot of people don't under well n- number one most people don't know what interstitial cystitis is or have never had a kidney stone, and uh, when you don't understand the pain that that causes, it's really hard to understand. But once I knew, once I once I woke up and didn't think about how much pain I was in, and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not waking up every day in pain. That's like when it clicked, where I was like. Okay, this is working. It's fabulous. So, just for people listening, so the timeline of carnivore was approximately three years ago. Is that when you? No, that was. I've only been carnivore for about a year. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Um, yeah, but I've been I've been on a ketogenic diet pretty much entirely for about five years. Um, and... Up until yeah, up until a year ago when I went full carnivore. Okay. So you also mentioned your thyroid. So how's, how's that panning out? Everything's great. I, and I, I think it's so crazy because I was 14 when I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's. That's really young. That's very, very, very young. And I was a active, healthy 14 year old. Um, and I have been on medication for my thyroid since I, from age 14 until I was 20, 25, 26. So that's a really, that's a really long time. Um, and I got 
I get tested every year still just to make sure I only went back on it for a short amount of time during my second pregnancy and shortly after. Um, and I've never, I've never, I, I, I haven't been on it since going carnivore. And do you have blood tests every so often to look at antibodies? Yeah, I do the, the thyroid panel. Um, pretty much once a year now, just because it used to be more frequently. I used to go twice a year, um, when I was on leave out, but now I only like do that general health panel once a year. That's amazing. So people will always want to know some real nitty gritty practicals. So, uh, what do you do during the day? Do you have OMAD, TUMAD? What's your meal frequency and what sort of things you're eating? So I've never been a breakfast eater. Um, I've never loved eating breakfast. Even as a kid, it used to drive my parents crazy. Um, And so when I first, and I think it's important for people to understand when I first went carnivore, I couldn't stop eating. I I could not stop eating. Um, I was eating constantly and I never weighed myself for the first three months. And I think that that's important because I knew my body was healing. I knew I needed to heal. Um, so when I started off, I was eating whenever I was hungry, but now that I've been doing this for a while, I don't eat breakfast. I do a fasted workout first thing in the morning. I work out for two hours in the morning, um, just because that's what feels natural for me. Um, and then I come home, I eat lunch, which is usually ground beef. Um, and then I will eat dinner, which is usually steak. And I, my eating window is usually six hours and that just feels natural to me. Um, so yeah, that's what my day looks like. And how long have you been doing the workouts? So I love working out that, that I started working out pretty intensely when I started keto the first within six months of starting keto. So about five years now I've been on my fitness journey. Um, I started off doing just group fitness classes because I knew I wanted to lose weight, but I also wanted to look good at the weight that I was. Um, and I think that that's another thing that I love to tell people is that you cannot out outwork a bad diet. My best friend, who is the doctor, always tells me your diet is going to help you lose the weight, but working out is going to do a lot of good internally, but it's going to make you look and feel good at the weight that you are. Um, So I just work out because I love it. I started with cycling and fitness, and then I slowly worked into working with some awesome personal trainers in weight. Um, And now I am lifting super heavy five days a week because I love it. Um, And I started lifting really intensely and intentionally, probably right after I had my second son. So two, two and a half years ago. Um, And that has been what I've been focusing on is really heavy lifting as a female. When did you first ever work out? When, when did you get into fitness? Um, so I grew up playing sports. So in high school, I was a volleyball player and I was a really competitive swimmer. Um, I also did horseback riding, which some people don't call that fitness, but it it actually is very intense. Um, And then I stopped in college. I would jog a little bit in college, but I was never a gym goer. I never went to the gym. And then once in we once I had my first son, a new gym opened up down the road and I had been keto for six or seven months at this point. And I was like, you know what? I think I'd like to join the gym just to get my body moving. Like I'm losing all this weight. I'd really love to see how it helps my progression. Um, so that was 2017. That would have been, and I've been a gym goer ever since then. Excellent. So These are bills, aren't they? Kidney uh, diseases and um, Hashimoto's. And I would, I just feel I should say to people, you don't have to exercise to get those things to resolve. That is nutrition that's doing that. Would you, would you agree? Yeah. And I think um, I, I'm trying, I lost 40 pounds, never working out just by taking my son on walks, nothing intense, nothing sweaty. It is, all diet. It is all, it truly, truly is all diet. You do not, a brisk walk is really what you, it's not going to get you shredded or anything, but, but that is great for your body. But I lost 40 pounds by never lifting a weight, by never stepping in a gym or doing anything intentional with exercise. So I completely agree. It really is all about diet. Mm. 
But I would want to just press you a little little bit because I am a big fan of your Instagram. I only have people on that I follow and I'm, I'm interested in. I noticed that you put something about since Carnivore, you've improved your gym performance and a couple of other things. So what's happened there? How have you, how have you logged that? How have you noticed it getting better? Um, so I so I record, not record, but I document everything that I ever do in the gym. So every exercise that I do, a shoulder press, um, a squat, whatever, um, I record every single time I go into the gym, how many sets I was able to do at what weight. And I have done that for years. And so I will say when I did start carnivore, everything went down the first 30 days, all my, you know, all my sets went down, all my weights went down. I was really fatigued very quickly, but then once my body adapted, I could slowly see, okay, I was able to do, um, eight reps at this weight instead of six, like last week. And so I can see every week what I'm able to do. And of course it's not linear. I'm not just going, you know, it's not a straight line. There are weeks where I am tired um, because of my cycle or whatever may be happening. My, I have two young kids. Maybe I didn't get a lot of sleep, but overwhelmingly, once I got over that lull with that adaptation phase, I'm recording everything so I can intentionally see what my progress looks like, because that's important to me because it, if I'm not, strong in the gym. And I know, then I know I'm not doing something right. My body isn't getting what it needs to give me that energy. So absolutely just recording every single detail of what I'm doing from my sets to my reps to the, the amount of weight. Brilliant. Yes. So a couple of other things um, you mentioned improved mental clarity. So could you yeah. speak on that a little bit? Well, so I'm like, I'm a young mom. I have young kids. My youngest is two. Um, we homeschool our oldest too. And I think, you know, as a mom, it's hard to gauge how much energy you have, but I tell people like people at the gym think I'm crazy because I have all this energy. I, you know, I get up, I, I could never peel myself out of bed. Even when I was keto, I was like, Oh my God, I'm so tired. Like getting out of bed at seven felt hard. And now I, I was just telling my husband too, I slept in today and that's so unlike me, but I woke up at six and I was like, I am ready to go. And that is really unusual. So I'm waking up really early in the morning, about 5 a.m. is usually um, the latest I'm sleeping in most of the time. And uh, it's just natural. Like, it's almost like my body has become so in sync with how much sleep I need because my I feel so regulated, I think is the appropriate word. So when I go to bed, I know that I'm going to wake up by five. It's just natural. Whereas two or three years ago, I could barely get out at seven. You know, it was just this really bad fatigue, which is also crazy because I was keto and I yeah. thought keto was the solution. Um, and so, you know, that for me is a big deal because I've always been someone who struggled to get up in the morning. Um, so that is a huge thing for me. But uh, being just focus. Like I can't, I feel like I, I I'm, a, I'm very hyper. That's, I think that's like the thing I'm very hyper. I have a lot of energy, but I feel more capable of doing the things that I need to do because I have that energy. If that, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, I've done two degrees in my life. Uh, my first degree when I was young and high carb was a, an honors degree in English literature. And I found that much, much harder than my recent science degree, which was which was much more technical and and and, and really difficult. Right. Um, one of the, th the other things you've mentioned, I've noticed this too, is faster hair and nail growth. Yeah, yeah. So I, and it seems so trivial, but I think for like the ladies out there, with some people, this is a really, especially hair, hair. Um, it's really important. Um, I have to cut my nails way more than I ever did before, even when I was keto. And that to me, it's, it's honestly kind of like, oh, it's kind of annoying. You know what I mean? Like, um, but it's great. But as someone who had Hashimoto's and significant hair loss, just coming out in absolute chunks. Um, it's, I mean, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's like, you know, I think my hair is very healthy and I have very long hair. 
Um, and if you see, if you could see the before and afters, and I might be able to get you a photo for that of right after I had my son compared to now, I mean, sometimes it takes women years and years and years to grow hair, the length that it just seems like it took a couple months for mine to grow. And I think as someone who had Hashimoto's and then hair loss as a, um, postpartum mom too, it's really nice to see hair growth and regrowth, um, as a female who has suffered from hair loss as well. Hmm. You're a big advocate of eating enough protein. Um, Yes, yes. Yeah, that, um, so within the last couple of months, um, I really try, try, I'm really focused on training um, for the body type that I want to have. So for for physique and aesthetics, just because that's where I'm at in my journey. Um, and I did not ever realize that I was under consuming protein because I thought, oh, I'm eating so much meat. Of course I'm eating enough protein. Um, I think the 80, 20 method is very trendy right now in the carnivore space. So the 80, 20 ratio of 80% fat, 20% protein. However, I do think that for women, um, unless you are trying to be in a therapeutic level of ketosis for something that is like, like epilepsy or, um, severe psoriasis. I think that genuine, generally that 80, 20 ratio is too low of protein. When you have too low of protein, your, your energy is going to be depleted too. I don't think people realize that you can get energy from protein as well. Um, your hair, your skin, um, your ability to perform in the gym, um, your athleticism is decreased. Um, of course, there's always exceptions to that rule. So right now I am consuming, um, I think the general standard of protein for most women, especially should be at least 130 grams a day. Um, I don't know if you find that to be true as cause you're, you're, you're the fitness guy. Um, Uh, But for me, that seems to be what I noticed from uh, the people that I talk to, especially at the gym. I am doing about 150 grams a day because I weigh 144 pounds right now. That seems to be really helping me with my aesthetics and my physique um, and especially my gym performance over the past couple of months. And so my ratio that I do for myself is the 60-40 ratio of fat to protein. Um, and that seems to be, I, I feel very good at this, this percentage of protein to fat. Yeah, I 100% endorse that. I've actually just done a video about the 30 grams per meal myth, which which yeah. absolutely is categorically not correct for many, many people. But this is about you, not me. But if people want to see that, it's on my channel. Um you are also, well, you're called the Contoured Carnivore. You're very interesting uh, to watch on the Instagram because, the, you know, you tick all my boxes. I'm an advanced personal trainer and all that sort of stuff. Um, but you also talk about makeup. So I wondered if you just quickly talk about that. Yeah, I I don't know what, because I kind of grew up, um, I grew up in a small town. I was a horseback rider for a very long time. So I worked on a farm, um, but I've always loved makeup. I don't know what it was. I, I, from a very young age, I always loved makeup. And, uh, that was, I think the first thing in my life that I felt super passionate about was like, Oh, I love makeup. And so I've kind of been doing freelance makeup here and there for pretty much since I was a teenager. Um, But mostly once I, once I got to college, I did my friends makeup for their dances. Um, I've done, um, a lot of proms, things like that. And so I continue to do that. But one thing that was super important to me when I did go carnivore was trying to be clean with my, my lifestyle choices as well. So the products that I'm putting on my skin and 90% of makeup out there is not clean beauty. So the makeup that I use on people that I get in the the makeup chair is considered clean. It passes all the European standards, but it's also got animal-based ingredients in it, which I thought this is it. This is perfect. So that's my shameless plug for my makeup. Um, And I love to just show people how to do makeup because I think it's, um, it can be really fun for women. Yeah, is it well? It's you see this role that I play is all about aesthetics. People don't come to me to say, "I don't care how I look." 
Yes, you want to reverse health, and health is the first thing. In fact, I am very reluctant when someone says, I don't really care about health, which I genuinely do get people saying. Uh, I had that quite starkly said to me. I was much happier when I was thinner. I don't care if uh, I get better or not. And I'm like, well, I'm probably the wrong coach for you because yeah. the weight loss is a side effect of eating properly. I mean, and your health will get better. But um, th- things like makeup, I think, are important because if you're if you're trying to eat properly and you're sticking chemicals on your face and estrogenic, and um, you know, endocrine disruptors or whatever, you're not helping yourself. So I think that I think it's important personally. And you have a podcast, I believe, that talks about that. Yeah, as well, so um, we have a podcast, Courtney, Luna, and I. Uh, she's uh, she's the wonderful. We have a podcast called Eat Me Question Everything. We upload every Friday, and basically, it's just talking to people in the carnivore keto health space about different hot topics. Um, we've talked to Dr. Anthony Chafee. We've talk to um people like rob sykes about bodybuilding on a ketogenic diet uh natalie grasso about bodybuilding um just all these people uh who have different important things to talk about and how a carnivore ketogenic lifestyle can help address that or improve the quality of life or debunk some of these hot myths that are going around all the time in the health space like cholesterol uh just things that are really important for everyone to know whether you're carnivore or not and getting that information out there easy to listen to that's excellent well so what's your go-to meal then what what do you think you look forward to the most um uh, probably a ribeye, like nine times out of 10, it's like a ribeye. And and that's so funny for me to say, because um, when I started carnivore, I would only eat sirloin slapped with tons of butter. And so I finally, you know, got after like two or three months, I was like, oh, I should probably eat a ribeye. And ever since then, it's like, oh my God, I want a ribeye. But uh, I'm a huge fan of like ground beef as well. I think it's, we it's so simple. It's such an easy diet. I think a lot of people overcomplicate it. I, I'm a dairy free carnivore too. So I don't do cheese anymore. I don't, I just can't handle it. Um, and it's just, the basics ground beef and a nice ribeye and i am a happy a happy carnivore and what do you drink i do drink coffee that i've given it up though that's one of those things where i gave it up in the beginning of my journey i did cut it cold turkey i gave it up for a few months and then i introduced it back in and didn't really feel a difference and i probably will give it up at some point this year too just to just to play around with it um, but I drink water. I don't drink. I, I don't. Uh, occasionally, I will have maybe a glass of wine, but I have to tread lightly because of my bladder. The interstitial cystitis alcohol is very much a trigger. Um, so I don't consume a lot of alcohol, but I drink pretty much only water all day, every day. And do you eat any fish? I'm not a seafood person. I'm not. And that's something I struggle with so much. So I do love shellfish, like lobster, crab. Um, I, I will eat salmon, uh, but I, and, and it, I should, because of my, you know, I do have a thyroid condition. I really should prioritize that. But um, I, I've never loved, I've never loved seafood. I, I just, it's never been my thing, but I do occasionally, I, I will occasionally eat it. Mm. I think uh, I was allergic to seafood until I was age 50. And then when I went low carb and keto, I've been able to eat those things that I couldn't eat. So I did a bodybuilding tournament in my twenties and I got sick and tired of chicken and my training partner who went on to do the Mr. England, um, he was eating tuna and salmon and all the fish. And I was so jealous. So I eat a lot of it, but I think it's because I was deprived of it. Um, I'd love also just to talk about, when you work out, you say you do it fasted. Is that is that something you found difficult to adapt to? Is that something you've always done? I know. And actually, I found the opposite that if I if I do because I I believe in honoring my body that I think when you are really adjusted to carnivore and you are in tune with your hunger signals, if I wake up hungry, I will absolutely eat. And I've actually found when I eat first thing in the morning, because I just cannot wait, that I have a bit more of sluggish workouts. I do find it a little bit more difficult to get through my workouts, almost because I have this full sensation in my stomach. I feel just like 
almost full. I can't really describe, I'm not bloated, but, um, I, I found the opposite to be true. I find fasted workouts, just, I feel amazing. Um, and I'm not focusing on like, Oh, am I going to, am I going to throw up? You know what I mean? Cause I do tend to push myself pretty hard. Um, but it, it just, it feels very natural for me to do a fasted workout. I, I, I think I've only eaten breakfast in the past six months. I think maybe twice I've woken up and been like, yeah, I think I need to eat before I work out um, because it just feels very natural for me. Yeah, I, well, I work out fasted. I think it's great. And that brings me on to a much broader subject. Do you do any fasting? Um, so never um, intentionally. I And I know I know that this is a, this is fasting is very hot right now. And then I just got Mindy Peltz's new book too. Um, I am not an, I usually don't intentionally fast. Um, I do have about a six hour eating window naturally, cause that just feels great for me. But there are times when I know we're going out to eat, um, like at an all you can eat Brazilian steakhouse or something like that, where I'm super excited and I know I'm going to eat a ton of food and I want to be able to, to, to eat a lot of food where I will intentionally not eat for the entire day until that meal. And I know that some people are like, that's super unhealthy, but it's like, I, no, I want to almost indulge in that food that I know that I'm not going to get very often. So I have done like 22 hour fast pretty much. I, I guess this is what you would consider that, but I I've never extended past that. Well, I disagree with that. I think that that is healthy. If people have said to you, that's not healthy. Of course it's, it's fine. I mean, uh, there were years and millions of years, I suppose, where there was a scarcity of food. So right. we're used to having a scarcity of food and I would do exactly the same thing. And I have done exactly the same thing here in the UK. There is a Brazilian restaurant in a place called Beverly and it is amazing. And I deliberately didn't eat all day just because exactly what you said, you, you pay a set price and you eat as much as you can. And I really wanted to enjoy those different types of flavors and meats. Right. It well, and it's expensive. Usually they're very expensive. And I'm yeah. like, well, I want to, if I'm going to pay $70 to eat at a Brazilian steakhouse, I want to get $70 <laughs> yeah. worth of meat. My, my best friend and I have a really good um, conversation that we have quite honest, um, quite frequently. And he and I always talk about how our natural state was to be fasted how we, that we often think of like, oh, I, I'm fueled because I've eaten a meal recently. And in some ways, I think that that is accurate, but how our natural state wasn't always to be fed and satiated was actually to be fasted um, because food was not down the road all the time or in the fridge. So uh, I, I do, I think fasting can be beneficial. I think it should be looked at as our normal kind of baseline. And then when we're lucky enough to have food, we are satiated and look at that as kind of like a rarity, I guess is what I would say. Yes. So you're a young mom uh, and obviously you've mentioned your hubby. Uh, what about the social situations? Do you find people around you think you're crazy? What, what are people around you like? Uh, so, um, my family is very supportive. My parents, my siblings, I grew up in a house where, um, my parents, um, my family has incredibly severe celiac disease. So health has always been on the table. Um, food not being great for us. I've always known that food wasn't not everything was good for us. You know, it's not, it's not like the, the, um, the norm where everything in moderation, I did not grow up like that. I knew of course, like gluten is bad for you. Um, so my family, they always make sure that I have what I need when I go stay with them. I'm really, really lucky. I'm very lucky because I know not all people have that with their, their direct family. My husband, Every crazy idea that I've ever had is like, go for it, go for it. He's the one who told me to get on social media when I started having really good results. Carnivore, he was like, you need to be documenting this. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, my kids are not carnivore. Um, we talk about it often. Um, but my oldest knows that I only eat meat. And he always goes, my mommy only eats meat because meat is the good thing for us. And I'm like, well, at least we're getting somewhere, you know? Um, but my two-year-old is the type that if you buy him a hamburger, he rips the bun off and just eats the burger. So I think we're going to have good luck with him. Um, but I have to say, I'm very honest with all my friends and family about only, you know, eating meat. Um, 
And I've never really, I've gotten a little bit of, oh, well, it's good to have a cheat every once in a while. And um, that's fine because I know that that's what people, and I'm just like, yeah, you know, it is okay for, you know, some, and I, I'm not perfect. I definitely, there have been times where I've indulged, but it's not been like a luxury to me. It's just the, oh, I did this. And I go back to the way that I eat, you know, immediately after, but I have never not had any, um, uncomfortable social situations. I think I'm very lucky because, um, everyone has been super supportive of me in my personal life. Yes. And I think you're a very good example. This is the thing. Um, if you're looking much healthier and you're off medications and you've lost a ton of weight. It's very difficult to say, wow, what you're doing is really bad for you. Although we do, we both suffer this on social media where it's very clear you've had all these benefits, but you still get people commenting saying, oh, it's so bad for you. What you're doing is terrible. Um, and I do like some of your blunt responses, but I can't repeat <laughs> them on this channel. But anyway, um, go I think check been- Instagram for those. <laughs> I think it's um it's been a great chat so uh devon is i really appreciate it have you got any final tips you want to give anybody um i think the thing that i love to really say to everyone um because obviously i get a lot of questions every day about this is that um comparison is the thief of joy um i always try and tell myself that your journey is going to look completely different than someone else's and it is exactly that. It's a journey. Um, weight loss is not linear. Health is not linear. Um, it's a journey. And it's so, and when you have fun with it, it is so fun to just play around with all these things that you can play around with your macros, different meats, um, different eating times, your fitness, what you're capable of. And it's just have fun with it and don't compare your journey to someone else's because it that sucks the fun out of it. And this has been the funnest year of my life, just seeing what works for me um, and just enjoy it because it is life is just way too short. Well, that's the end of that video. Thank you for watching all the way through. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any comments and you haven't already commented, then please drop a comment. If you've subscribed already, thank you very much. It really does help the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, then maybe just pushing my face there and subscribing be really handy i'd really appreciate that it does help the channel and if you liked it don't forget to give me a like as well because that moves the video up the algorithm and more people might get to see it thank you so much for the support and getting right to the end of this video uh, you can go now there's nothing else oh you're still here okay well um what else could i tell you um how about a big thank you for staying right to the end end and realizing that i was messing about yeah i've gone now finished no, really, I've finished. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Your support means the absolute world to me. And if you're enjoying the show, I've got a small favour to ask you. I'd be incredibly grateful if you would consider becoming a supporter and make a small monthly donation. Your contribution will really help to improve the show. I'll be able to improve the software, maybe put a few more episodes out and do many things that I'm hoping to do in the future. I do them a lot quicker. So it's a small monthly contribution. You can cancel at any time and the link is in the show notes. Thanks very much for listening.